Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Greeting Star. Today I'll be making a birthday card, which you can see here. The supplies I'll be using is the Nina Solar White cardstock. The front panel is 80 pound, and the actual card base is going to be in 110 pound, which you'll see later. It's a size A2 card, which is a four and a fourth by a five and a half. And the supplies I'm using, I have a rubber stamp from Craftsmart which I purchased at Michael's in the dollar bin. It's a really cute little banner uh, stamp with lots of little hearts. And I'm going to be using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. These are watercolor markers, but I'm not going to be using water with them today. I'm just going to use them to ink up my stamp. And it's kind of a really neat way when you want to have lots of different colors on your stamp instead of just one stamp. Instead of just one color, you can use these markers. It's a really neat technique. So you can see here I'm inking up the first one in red, and then I go on down the line. Uh, again, they're the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Uh, I didn't have indigo, indigo in my set, so I just used a key, peacock blue, and then I used violet. And I'm almost done here. I have a couple more to go. It's really easy to do, and it's a fun technique because, as I said, you can use lots of different colors on one stamp instead of just stamping it on an ink pad of one color. So it's a neat technique. And the, the ink, if it dries, all you have to do is breathe on it. It's called huffing, and you'll be able to reactivate the ink, and it'll stamp on your card. It's a really fun way to make a card. So there we go with my the last one, my violet. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, that's the, that's the blue. There's only five banners there. So I'm going to huff on it, and then you'll see me stamp it in the middle of the card. Sorry for my head there. There we go. I go ahead and press and leave it there for a second to ensure the ink gets absorbed into the paper. That's a pretty good impression. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean my stamp off with my stamp scrubber there, which I purchased at Amazon. You can tell it's gotten lots of use. So that cleans it up pretty nicely. And then I have a chamois there to wipe off any excess ink. That's just a stain, but to be sure, I'm going to clean it again. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, re-ink it up. And actually, I decided I didn't really need to clean it off because I decided to start with the red again um, because I'm going to put the banner on the bottom. That first banner is for the word happy, and then underneath I'm going to put the word birthday. So I didn't really need to clean it off. But I did. So here we go again. I'm going to clean. I'm going to start with the red, and move on down the line of the rainbow. I don't think it really takes that much extra time to do this, and the results are really nice. So. It's worth the effort. Sorry about the focusing issue. Again, remember once you've applied all the different colors, you'll want to go ahead and reactivate the ink by breathing on it, just huffing on it, and then stamping it down. I'm going to tilt it a little bit so it looks like the banner's got a little bit of a curve in it. Holding it down for a few seconds to make sure the ink absorbs into the paper. And then I'm going to clean my stamp off again. Give it a good scrub. Whoops, 
That's not a problem. That just fits together again really easily. Happens all the time. I didn't break it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to start with the last two colors. And when you're doing this, you have to remember to start on the right side of the stamp because when you turn it over, the right side of the stamp is going to be the beginning. I almost made the mistake before I filmed this video of coloring it from the left instead. Which I guess it wouldn't have mattered too much, so the colors would have just been reversed. And I decided to go ahead and color all of them, even though there will be an extra flag at the end. I'll just go ahead and put an exclamation mark in that extra flag, and that'll work out nicely. Okay, one more huff and I'm ready to stamp. can see here I'm counting to make sure I did it correctly and actually I don't need the last couple so that's fine it just goes off the edge a little bit so that'll be enough for the word birthday and then an exclamation mark all right so we're done with that part and now we're going to move on I'm going to get another stamp set here in a second that has a birthday cake that I'm going to put underneath this banner. Have to go find it. There it is. This is from Oriental Trading Center or Oriental Trading Company. I bought it online and these are really inexpensive stamps. I'm going to use the birthday cake and the sentiment for inside the card and also the balloon. I was contemplating putting it on the front but it goes on the, on the inside much better. I was thinking about adding some confetti around the front of the card, but I decided against it. So that's what I'll be using. Now this birthday card is a little bit too big, so once I adhere it to my stamping block here, this is a clear acrylic stamping block that can be reused over and over again for your clear stamps. I'm just going to mask off the bottom portion of the cake with a little purple sticky. Actually, I think that's the 3M tape that I'm using. Yep, that's a 3M tape. And I'm going to ink it up with Ranger Archival ink, which is waterproof, so when I color it with my Zig Clean Color Real Brushes, the, the uh, black ink won't bleed or run into the other colors because it's waterproof. So that's perfect. So you can see there, I'm going to stamp it right underneath the banner. I just hold it for a few seconds to let the ink absorb. Now I pressed a little bit too hard there so you can see the candles are a little bit thicker and darker than the rest of the cake, but that's okay. Now here I'm going to go ahead and use a mechanical pencil to write the words happy birthday inside the hearts. They were pretty tiny little hearts, but I managed to get them in there anyway. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Faber-Castell uh, Pet Artist 
pen to trace over the ink. Here I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to get that exclamation mark in the last heart because it's hanging off the page. Okay, so this is the Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen in black. It's a number 199 and it contains India ink, which is a permanent ink. So I'm just going to trace my pencil letters. I think it turns out well. You know, some people don't like to use handwriting on their cards, but I think it makes it more personal. So just make your own decision as to what you want to do. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I decide to color the flames. I'm using orange at the center of the flames. Then I'm going to use the yellow to go around the orange flames and kind of blend the two colors a little bit. It's difficult to see because the flames are so tiny, but I've also decided to create sort of a halo around each of the flames with a yellow ink. And I think that looks nice. And then I'm just cleaning off that yellow, make sure there weren't there wasn't any stray orange left on the brush. Now for the um, for the cake, the stripes on the cake, I'm going to use a blue color because it's for a male recipient. And I decide that I want to use two colors, a, a darker blue and a lighter blue. So I use the regular blue, and then I use the lighter cornflower blue, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, on those stripes. I'm going to color each end of the stripe and leave the middle blank. And that's to create kind of a highlight which will help the cake appear more round. So now I'm going to get another blue, the cornflower blue, which is a lighter blue, to go in the center. And these stripes are pretty thin. So you can see that I don't spend a lot of time to blend because those stripes are just too thin to notice that anyway. It's a lot of fun to, to use two different colors and if you're just starting out it's not difficult with these watercolor pens to blend. They blend much easier than the alcohol inks. Um, I think it's easier for beginners because they blend so well together. So again I'm using the blue and the cornflower blue on all of the stripes of the birthday cake. The top one's real tiny. There we go, almost done. Now I'm going to move on to, I decided an, for an orange color for the birthday cake itself. And uh, the orange color is just the regular orange, and then that's the dark color. And for the light color, I decided to use the flesh color marker for the light. It's taking me a while to find it. So there's the orange color marker and then there's the flesh color marker. And I'm going to use a flicking motion on either end of the cake, again leaving the middle blank. That's where I'm going to use the flesh color. But this flicking motion um, creates sort of like a serrated, that's the best word I can think of right now, edge on each of those. And then when you blend it with a lighter color, it looks like a really nice highlight. And it also makes the object appear to be a little more round, which gives the card some dimension instead of it just being flat. I always think it's so magical the way the colors blend and it makes the object come to life.
Now these markers also come in a 24 pack, I believe, and a 36 pack. You can buy them on Amazon or any other crafting website. They're really awesome markers. I love them. There you go. You can see how nice that looks. Now I'm going to create a mat to go underneath this. But first I'm thinking about what color to use on the icing. Oh no, nope. first I'm going to do the candles and I decide to color them blue to match the stripes on the cake. So I'm going to use the, the blue color and the cornflower blue again. The candles are so small though it's difficult to tell. You can't really see the difference. And then I've decided to use my snow marker for the icing on the cake. So this is a really neat marker. It's kind of like a paint pen. You have to shake it before you use it and um, prime it the first time you use it by pumping it on a blank piece of paper which is what you can see I did there on the purple pad but um, I'm just dabbing it on and I have to wait for it to dry once it dries then you can use a heat tool on it a heat gun and it'll puff up which is a really cool thing you can use it for snow or marshmallows or the next thing I want to do is see if I can uh, maybe color it and then puff it up. I don't know if that'll work. I'll have to give that a try in the next one I do. You can see I made a little mistake there. I got some stray ink on the bottom of the card which I'll just fix somehow or another. I'm going to put my two extra markers to the side so I don't confuse the rainbow. And here's the final card. It's difficult to see, but the white icing is kind of puffy. And then um, the inside of the card has the sentiment along with the balloons, which I colored with the orange and the flesh color. Thanks for watching and have a great day.